Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Cardinal in Bloom, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little spiked seltzer, but feel free to sip on anything you want, if it's coffee or tea or juice or water, whatever you want, but let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, we're gonna to be using a stretched and prime 16 by 20 canvas. Of course, you can switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint, the colors I'm using today are titanium white, green oxide, fire red, chrome yellow, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and Mars black. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using three brushes. The brushes I'm using are a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and a number one round brush. And you'll hear me refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And again, you can switch those up if you'd like. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I'm gonna be putting in the description below this video quite a bit of information for you. Um, one of them is gonna be a link where you can purchase this entire convenient paint kit for this particular project. Um, I'm also going to be providing you with a downloadable image of the final painting so you can print that and use it as reference as you go along. And I'll also be putting down their written step-by-step -step instructions so you can print those as well um, and use them as reference as you go along. And that's all you're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step, I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be painting the background. The colors that I'm gonna be using are red, brown, green, yellow, and white. I'm gonna be applying the paint in a circular brush stroke. I'm gonna to attempt to get the center of my canvas the lightest, and the exterior, especially at the top, I'm gonna to get that darker. Um, my thought process as I'm going through this is we are creating a background that's kind of like an out of focus um, forest or you know outdoors. So you can have different sections of color and you can have them kind of blending together. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna put a little bit of red, green, and brown on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna be applying it. I'm starting up in the top left. You could really start wherever you want. And then the next time I go to pick up paint, I don't wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of green. And now I'm just gonna kind of work that into it. And I'm gonna continue this process until I get the entire canvas covered. So if I want another dark area, I just picked up that same color combination, green, brown, and um, red. I'm starting up in this top left corner. Now maybe I'm picking up a little bit of green and yellow. You can see the transition in the color there. And again, you can really do any type of color combination you want. I like the red in here because it kind of complements the, um, the bird itself, but you could certainly do a blue background if you wanted to, or you know more green and yellow, or more brown. Whatever you want to do is totally fine. Um, the, the lighter you make it, the more that bird is gonna be um, you know, vibrant and pop out in the center. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm making that center of my canvas on the lighter side. So that way it'll almost look like, it, um, like the bird is being, I don't know, put in a spotlight or something. But that's gonna be a visual preference on your part. Um, I don't really use a ton of paint, so that way when I um, do want to kind of shift the colors or add a little bit here or there, the paint dries really nice and fast for me um, because I don't use a lot. Uh, if you're finding that you want to do layers or you know you want to shift the color at all and it's not really working out that well for you, it's just kind of all blending together, that might mean that you have a, a good amount or perhaps a little bit too much paint on the canvas for that particular 
um, section and I would just kind of go away from it for a little while, let it dry for a minute while you're painting some another area and then just come back to it and you can do a second layer on top of it. And again, I'm using a little bit more white as I go towards the center of the canvas. So I'm really, every time I go to pick up paint, I'm really just picking up a different combination of those initial colors that I said, which would be brown, green, red, yellow, and white. And you're going to find your you know, visual preference as you go through this process. Um, I'm making it a little bit darker down in the bottom. And I do want mine to kind of look like all of these um, sections kind of of color belong together. So I do find myself overlapping from one section to the next, just so it looks like they've kind of merged together. Even if I've got high contrast, like I've got this light area next to the dark area, I still kind of want them to overlap a little bit. Um, so that's that's a part of the process that might take you a couple of tries to get used to um, because your paint is going to be either too wet or too dry or not enough or too much. Um, so it does take a little bit of, you know, practice and, you know, getting used to what your brush is going to do for you and how much of the brown you want on there or how much of the green you want on there. And again, you can continue to just kind of switch colors like every time I go into my paint again I'm doing a different combination of those four colors so it's it's not consistently the same color all over the canvas but again you might want yours to be a pale yellow or a you know a nice a vibrant green make it look really springtime with those green and yellow leaves on there or you know the essence of the colors in the background so you can again kind of use whatever is visually appealing to you um, you can see I'm just kind of working my way around the canvas I'm going to get these edges just a little bit darker than that center um, at times I am touching my brush in the red just a teeny tiny bit because I do like um, a little bit of that warmth that that red brings in and again that's going to tie um, these exterior colors to our bird on the inside. Um, so again, you can have fun with this. If you want, you can also paint the edges or the sides of your canvas as you go along. Um, that way when you go to hang up this beautiful masterpiece on your wall, you won't feel the need to put a frame around it, around it because it'll be all nice and professionally finished. Um, that's just a little trick of the trade to get the, those edges nice and painted. And again, you can kind of overlap these sections if you want yours lighter or darker or you know more vibrant than I'm doing. It's all really whatever kind of um, visual preference you want. And as I get towards this center, I am kind of just making sure that I've got my sections overlapped a little bit so that way they look like they belong together. And if you find that yours is, you know, too dry or it's not blending well, just I suggest just adding a little more paint or another layer um, as opposed to adding, say, water to your brush or something like that. Sometimes adding that um, some people like to add water to their brush. And what may end up happening in this kind of case scenario is you might end up lifting the paint right off of the canvas if you have um, too much water on your brush. And again, I'm just kind of... I'm tidying up here just I, I don't know if you noticed my head just went back a little bit this helps me to kind of see um, the canvas in a fuller sense so I can see if there's any areas that I want to add paint or kind of make sure that I've worked it all in there and that I've got a nice representation of the colors that I want to see on this on this background and I'm just kind of softening my corners a little bit. And we are going to switch brushes to the medium brush. So once you get this background nice and colored in the way that is appealing to you, you can put your large brush away in your water cup and you can take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our branches. I'm gonna be using my medium brush to do this and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, and white. Um, I'm gonna be using those colors on my brush at the same time so that way I have an assortment of shades of 
branch <laughs> or brown or black, whatever, gray. Um, that to me makes it look really natural. I'm gonna have a branch or two over on the left side. I'm gonna have one here where my bird is gonna sit because I'm gonna have my bird really big in the middle. And then I'll have one coming up over on the right hand side. But you can really put yours wherever you want because your bird is gonna be as big or as little as you want, just kind of reserve areas in the middle. Um, when I do this, I don't hold my brush tight. I have all three colors on my brush at the same time, and I'm not really concerned at what the tips or the ends of the branches are gonna look like because I'm gonna have um, big, huge blossoms that are gonna cover those, so I'm, I'm not really concerned about that. So I also want to, um, at the base of the branch or um, the part that's farthest away from the tip, I want that to be the widest because that's going to indicate that it's um, closer to the real tree and it should be thicker the farther away from the tip it is. So I'm gonna start kind of over in this right hand corner and I'm just gonna kind of get my branch going with a little bit of a wide branch at the bottom and you can see I've already kind of wiggled some, um, some edges to it. I definitely, want to right off the bat tell myself where I'm gonna have my bird sitting. So I think I'm gonna have mine sitting somewhere in here. And then I'm just gonna have fun with making some branches coming off of here. And again, you really don't need to um, think about it too, too hard. Uh, if you can give your branches some kind of wiggle, they bend, they twist, they um, branch off, they have light spots, they have dark spots. Maybe one time you add a little bit of white to your brush. Maybe the next time you just add brown to your brush. So really you can have a bunch of fun with how these kind of break out. It's okay if you have one that crosses over the other because that's what they're gonna do in Mother Nature, um, in the natural world, I should say. Now I'm gonna go over to this left-hand side. I think I'm gonna have a big, huge one kind of coming up from the bottom here, working its way over here. And then maybe I've got to have, you know, maybe a couple coming up here. And those of you who have unsteady hands like me, I love making branches because I don't have to worry about my hands saying really super close. So this is a this is a, always a fun step for me to do these branches because it feeds right into my, my shaky little hand here. Um, and then I'm gonna put one maybe over here. And again, you can really have fun with these. Make as many as you want. You're gonna have blossoms coming from each one, so it's okay if those tips aren't you know perfectly executed and then i'm going to make sure i have some good little white highlights throughout my branches so that way it lends um, to the the more realistic side of it um, with you having little highlights here and there and then we are going to use this same brush for the next step so once you get your branches on here and you're pretty happy with your highlights and the and the dark spots, you can just wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our bird. We're gonna use our medium brush and we're gonna use just red paint. Um, think of this as like the primer coat. It's okay if it doesn't cover 100%, we're gonna put it on there, it's gonna dry, and then we'll be putting all the details on later. So we're not gonna use a pencil or anything like that. We're just gonna draw some shapes um, with our red paint and you can just follow right along with me. Um, for me, when I teach birds, I teach it as there are two basic shapes to every bird. There's an egg for the body with the pointy part of the egg being where the uh, tail comes out and a circle for the head. Even if you're thinking like a flamingo or a hawk or a, you know, a dodo bird. <laughs> There's all kinds of birds, a swan. Even if the head is far away from the body, the head always has a circular base to it and the body always has a egg shape to it. And then there's a different neck and there's different feathers and different beaks and that's what gives them their individual shape. So for this one, we're gonna go with that thought process. So I'm gonna do an egg with the pointy part where my tail is gonna go 
and I'm my bird is really really big so I'm gonna start probably at the pointy part down here and I'm gonna make myself a big old upside down egg and I'm just gonna color it in so that way I have a you know a nice visual as to how I'm gonna do um, the rest of it and you are gonna probably find that throughout this process of making this bird that it's gonna it's gonna morph you're gonna have um, you know little pieces that you're gonna want to bump out a little bit or make longer or taller or wider or whatever the case may be so just know that it is a, a building process um, and always a work in progress um, but there's my egg type shape I'm gonna do my circle type shape now and it's okay if the circle overlaps your egg so here I go my particular just so you know how big mine's gonna go it's gonna be a pretty big circle but it's not gonna go as wide as the body so I'm gonna start somewhere maybe right about here and I'll probably end up somewhere about there and here we go so here's gonna be my circle it might be a little ovalish but I'm attempting to make it kind of in the circular fashion. So there's going to be my circle. And what I don't want is to have it really um, like a bobble head. So if you have it, if it's really, really cut deep in um, at that neck, what you can do is you can just kind of close off, you know, any little really pointy indents that you may have. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my tail on. So these particular tails, these cardinals have these really long tails. So I'm going to actually just kind of do it pretty slender where it meets the branch because the branch is going to be in front. And then I'm going to bump it out a little bit in the center. Think of this as a really long oval. And I'm making mine go all the way down to the bottom of my canvas, almost going off the bottom of my canvas. I'm just going to paint it in red and again it's not as wide as the actual bird itself and if you bump into your branch don't worry you're going to be hiding that whole part with um, um, pet <laughs> blossoms <laughs> I was like what are we putting there we're going to put blossoms there so whatever happens here don't really worry about it now I got to finish the head so I know that I have a large beak coming off of here and I'm going to put the beak almost at the top of the head and you'll see why in a minute because we still have a big crown to put on the top. So these beaks are pretty big. They kind of um, come a little bit rounded at the top and almost straight at the bottom. So I'm going to come up my head maybe about an inch or so and I'm going to make myself a little bit of a mark. And then at the top of my head, I'm just going to come down just a little bit and make myself another mark. So that's going to be the top and the bottom of my beak. Now I'm just going to kind of bring this line out maybe about, I don't know, an inch or so, and maybe an inch and a half. And then I'm going to connect this top one to here with an arcing kind of line. So just want to get my hand out of the way here. And I've made myself an arcing line and then I'm just going to color it in. Doesn't really look like a cardinal yet, but hold, hold tight. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I've got to make this crown. So I'm, I'm going to take and I'm going to, wherever your head, your neck is here, I want you to kind of go straight up from there and to the left a little bit. So you're going to come into the beak a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself another mark on the right hand side just a little bit as it's coming along the crest of this head right here I'll make that mark right there now I'm going to connect these with kind of like a triangle so I'm going to take this and I'm going to do something like that comes up you know a good ways these are pretty big heads here and you can have it as like a soft triangle it doesn't have to be really rigid straight lines it's okay if it bumps out a little bit here and there this is just kind of the essence of the shape and it's not going to be you know perfectly straight this fr the front side can even have a little bit of a curve to it and then you just paint this whole thing in red 
And now once I have that, now I've got to put some little feathers at the top of this crown. So I've got, I'm just doing kind of a continuation of this. And I'm going to do some of these coming off, some little feathers coming off the back or the top of this crown. And then you just sit and you adjust any of these edges that you want. If this is too dipping in here, you can certainly, you know, take your brush and just kind of manipulate it whatever way looks right to you. I think I'm gonna just kind of close this off a little bit so it's not so, you know, circular. And that's gonna do it for that step. I'm just kind of brushing out any really thick spots of red paint. And then for the next step, we are going to be using, let's say we're gonna use our small brush. So you can put the medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we are using our small brush, we're using black paint, and we're painting the black details on the face, which are gonna include the mask and um, the mouth on the beak um, and a little shadow line underneath the beak. So how we're gonna do this is first we're gonna section off the beak. So one of my tips for you with using small brushes is you can take your brush and spin it in your paint on the side of your palette and that brings it nice and pointy. Um, when using black paint, if you want to, you can also add a touch of water to it and that's gonna make it like an ink cons consistency which gives you nice fluid lines. Um, and don't press hard if you want little lines. So how I'm gonna do this, I've got my brush loaded with some fluid black paint. I'm going to make a couple of initial marks here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, where my forehead meets my beak, I'm gonna make myself a tiny little black dot. And then what I'm gonna do is and the bottom edge of my beak, I'm going to oh, I'm going to draw a black line that's going to come into the face per about an inch. And when you come into the face, if you want to dip it down a little bit, you can do that too. That'll make the beak look wider as we go. So here I go. I'm going to start at the tip of my beak on the bottom. And then if you bring it, you can bring it down a little bit into the face. Now I'm going to take that dot that I just made, and I'm gonna connect it to the end of this line using an arcing motion or an arcing line. So I've got my dot right here, and then I'm gonna connect it. And now I've separated my beak. Now I'm going to put an opening where your beak is gonna open. I'm gonna start at the tip, and I'm gonna end up about halfway in that arcing line and I'm going to do a, a wiggle line that's gonna start down. I'm gonna go up, down, up, and I'm gonna end up about halfway in that um, arcing line. So here we go. And if you make your line too thick, don't worry about it. You can thin it out later when we put the um, second coat on the beak. So here we go. I'm gonna go up, down, up. And I landed about halfway into that beak. Now I'm going to do the mask. I'm gonna come up a little bit from um, where I made that initial dot here, maybe about a half of an inch. And then on the neck portion, it's gonna be the entire neck down to where it meets the body right in through here. And you can, you can do an outline if you want to, and then we can fluff out the edges. That's kind of the easiest way for me. So what I do from this mark here is I'm gonna kind of do a little scooping motion. I do a little line like this, and then I'm gonna do another scooping motion on the other way. That's gonna come down like that. And then I'm gonna connect these two to here. So that's gonna be my shape. And then what I do is I, I just reloaded my brush with black paint. I'm gonna do some little fluffy feathers coming out here, right along that neck. And then I'm just gonna paint this section in black. And wherever it meets the red fur, fur, <laughs> feathers, you can um, add just almost like um, 
little feathers. So I, instead of it being a real solid line, I just wiggle my brush right along that edge. So that way it doesn't look like I've outlined it. It looks like it's got just little kind of feathers in through there. Not the, not where it meets the beak, um, but where it meets the, the, the cheek or the forehead, you could do that if you wanted to. But especially, you could do it, this is the part that gives you the most effect, right on that neck. And then when you get this all set, we are going to change brushes. We're gonna uh, switch to the medium brush. So once you get this all nice and done, I'm just kind of fluffing out my little feathers on the edges here so it looks like it's more realistic as opposed to just lines on there. Once you get this done, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the feathers on the bird. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, red, yellow, and white. Um, and I said them in that distinct order because that's the order I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna go from dark to light. I'm gonna do my shadowy areas first and work my way towards the lighter area. And for me, the shadowy side of my bird is gonna be the right side. Um, so I'll have the right side dark and also anywhere that's underneath. So an underneath part would be my tail because that's underneath my body, my body would probably cast a shadow on my tail. And also maybe, you know, around the neck, maybe around the neck is a little bit darker too. So here I go, I'm gonna start with black and brown on my brush at the same time. This will probably be the only time I pick up black because I know how overpowering it is and I don't want it to overtake my canvas or my bird because it's tough to bring the red back once there's a lot of black on there. I'm gonna start in my tail. Again, this is a safety zone because if it goes wrong, you just cover it with flower blossoms later. So here we go. I've got red and brown on my brush. And if you feel like, oh my God, it's too much, just wipe it on your, wipe, either wipe it on your paper towel or just pick up some red with it. And that's gonna to help to dull it down a little bit. And as I'm doing this, I'm painting it in the direction I feel that those feathers would, would fall or would curve. So for me, the tail, I've got them kind of coming down in the middle and then almost a little curved on the edges. I have specific sections to my bird. I have my tail, my body, and my head, like the face part, and then the top of the head. So each one of those sections, I'm gonna probably have a little bit different of a direction for the brush stroke so it can um, tell the viewer what you know particular section it is so now i'm not going to pick up black again i still have brown red and black on my brush i'm going to start what whatever is on my brush i'm going to start to let it work its kind of way off of my brush in this area that i know is going to be shadowed which is the underbelly of the of the bird now i'm putting red and brown on my brush to start working in the darker side of the bird, which is that right hand side. So red and brown is on my brush right now. I'm just kind of getting some of this darker shadowy area over on this right hand side. And if you're feeling like you're, you want it a little bit darker, you can certainly add a teeny tiny bit of black, but just be careful because again, that's, a, it's tough to bring that red back on top of it. Um, you could also put a little tiny, well, I'm just doing this because I have dark colors on my brush. You could put a little sliver of a wing over on this left-hand side if you want to add, you know, another dimension to it. You can just take a little bit of your darker colors and just add a little sliver over here. But again, this is your feathers and your wings and, you know, whatever other, you know, little additions you want to put on there. But Right now, I'm still just working with the dark colors. I know that I want some shadowy area back here on the back of the head. I probably want a couple of little shadowy areas in through this crown. And again, if you feel like you wanna add a couple of tiny streaks of black, feel free to do so. Just be careful when you do it. And then now that I've got 
some nice darkness over on this side, what I'm gonna to start to do is I'm gonna to start to work my way to the left. And again, if you have too much of the dark color still on your brush, just wipe them on your paper towel or wash it. Um, I just picked up a load of red without adding any more brown or black to it. And now I'm just gonna start working my way over to the left. And then once I feel like I've got a good transition with that red, now I'm gonna start introducing, let me just finish this little section here. I'm gonna introduce red, yellow, and white because I need my feathers to start to get lighter over here on the left-hand side. But what I don't want to happen is I don't wanna end up with a big pink cardinal. So in order to counteract red and white going pink on me, I'm gonna use a little yellow too. So right now I'm picking up a little red, yellow, and white all on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna to start to do these feathers over on this chesty part. So for me, I feel like they're gonna just kind of, you know, fall over um, in a downward fashion, but still have a little bit of a curve to them. So that's where I'm getting this here. And I want them to be a little bit brighter. So I'm just tiny, tiny bit of white I just put on my brush. I want you to be able to see them. So I'm just adding little bits here. And you want them to kind of layer themselves onto each other. You don't um, want to have these long streaks um, in through there. It is kind of a striping kind of um, painting technique, but I still have little curve. I'm making little curves and they're kind of layering onto each other. I'm going to put a little bit on this face right here, which I'm going to kind of overlap a little bit into the um, mask area. I'm going to put some on the front of the crown area too. And this all leads to um, a nice dimension on, on the bird. And if you can keep the brush strokes a little bit on the curved um, side, that's going to tell the viewer that there's roundness to the bird. And I'm just kind of up here, I'm still kind of giving them a little bit of a curve. I want a little bit more white on my brush here. And again, if you if you go a little bit too pink, just bring back some red and yellow, and that's going to help to counteract any any pink you might have um, encountered. And I'm just kind of filling this out back here. Make sure everything looks like it belongs together. And you can certainly, you know, make it bolder. You can make it, you know, as bright as you want, as subtle as you want. It's totally up to you. Um, but the more contrast you have from the left side to the right side, that's going to tell the viewer that there's more, you know, more light or a light source in the equation. And again, you don't really have to worry too much about what happens down here. Um, but if you want there to be a little bit of dimension, just, you know, add a little bit of that yellow and white and red, and that's going to pop it out and make it look a little bit rounder. I think I'm pretty happy with this at the moment here. Let me just see if I want to add any other little sections here. Um, so what we're going to do for the next step this is one of those steps I know that it's kind of important <laughs> for, for this, so it, sometimes it takes me a couple extra minutes. So the next step, we are going to be switching brushes to the tiny brush. So when you are able to stop painting, which I clearly am not, um, you can take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for this step is we are using our small brush we are finishing the details on the face and the colors I'm gonna be using are black, white, yellow, and red. Um, and I'm gonna start my, mm, yeah, I think I'm gonna do my mask area first. So we gotta do an eye and some little feathers in the mask area and then we're gonna add um, a highlight and a shadow on our beak so we can um, make it so it's not so flat looking. So how I do the eye is I'm gonna put black and white on my small brush at the same time. And I'm gonna do a portion 
of a circle. So it's going to be the bottom left side of a circle. And I'm going to do it kind of in the middle of this mask area. And it's about the size of maybe a pea. So I'm going to take, well, I need to put a little more white on my brush. Sometimes you don't know how much of each color you have on there. So something like that. I did not do the top portion of that particular circle. Now I'm going to add a dot right there. And then what I'm going to do, I did not wash my brush. I just added a little bit more black. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding just little gray feathers throughout the rest of the mask. And what this is going to do is it's helping to kind of um, give the eye its own area and it's adding a little bit of dimension throughout the mask. And then I will, once I get these little feathers on here, you can even put some right around that little eye part. Once I get these little gray feathers on here, I'm going to just quickly wash and dry my little brush and put the, um, the little details on my beak. So I'm just quickly washing and drying that. And so the trick to the beak is you don't want to use a lot of paint on your brush. So I'm going to start with yellow and white and a very little bit of yellow and white. And I'm going to add my highlight to the top of my beak. So yellow and white. And the reason I say don't use a lot of paint is because you're going to want to adjust this color as you go and you're going to have a difficult time adjusting it if, if it's too wet. So I'm just adding a little bit of yellow and white. I'm now dipping my brush in red paint so I can get this to kind of blend in with it. If your line, um, the opening to your mouth is too wide or too clunky or too thick for you, now's the time to start, you know, maybe you put a little bit of red or red and brown on it to um, get it to look not so vibrant. And then at the bottom, I'm not quite sure what colors I told you. <laughs> I think I told you um, brown, red, yellow, and white. If I said black, you could use black too, but this bottom shadow area can be brown or black. Um, but black, again, is kind of dangerous, so just be careful if you use too much um, black. And then I am going to, I'm just going to close out this little section here a little bit. And at any time, you can certainly wash and dry your brush if you need to. And again, I'm just kind of adding like a little shadow down below. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of, if I want to add a little bit more dimension, I can add a little bit more of that highlight on the note on the top. But this is just, again, another little slow step that you want to just take your time. It's okay if it's not perfect coming out of the gate. You can just kind of keep reworking it until you get that beautiful highlight at the top. If you want your beak to be all yellow or all, you know, orangey kind of color, you can certainly just keep working it until you get it into the correct shade that you want it to be in. Um, and then when you feel that you've got a good highlight on the top, you've got a nice shadow on the bottom, we are going to switch brushes to the large brush. I'm just kind of working this little beak down here a little bit more. And I do, I'm, I'm going away from the beak for a second because I want to put little bright highlight feathers on my top up here. I didn't quite get them as bright as I wanted to before. So I'm just adding little streaks as we go. And we're going to switch brushes to the um, large brush. So when you get this all nice and done, you've got your beak as bright as you want to. You've made your tweaks on your feathers as I'm strangely doing right now. Um, we're going to switch brushes to the large brush. So you can just get ready for that last step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing our flower blossoms. I'm going to be using the large brush. The colors I'm going to be using are brown, 
yellow, red, and white. Um, but you could use kind of any combination here. Um, how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna go from dark to light. So I'll use brown as a shadow color. I'm gonna pre-mix a mid-tone for my blossoms and then I'm gonna use white as a highlight or the final little dab. I'm gonna be using my big brush and I'm gonna be dotting for this technique. When I do this, I am thinking of like clusters of flowers. These are kind of imaginary flowers. I didn't paint them to resemble any particular flower I know, um, just the pretty ones that live inside of my head. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to first do is I'm pre-mixing myself my mid-tone color. So I really like um, this to be kind of a light, pale, um, kind of pastel -y color for my mid-tone. So I'm gonna use whatever I have left for my yellow. I'm gonna to touch a tiny bit of red into it and then I'm gonna use some of my dirty white <laughs> and I'm gonna just kind of mix this all around and I'm gonna just kind of keep mixing it until I get the desired shade that I want. And you can have fun with this. There's, you can make it a beautiful peach color. You could actually just do red and white and have yourself some pink flowers. So really whatever kind of tone or color you want, have fun with it, it's just your painting. Um, so I've got my pre-mixed color, so I'm going with kind of this light peachy kind of color. Um, now you can wash your brush at this point if you want to, or do as I am, oops, which is just kind of wiping it off on the side of my palette. And then what I'm doing is I'm gonna pick up a whole bunch of brown. This is gonna be my shadow or my first, um, first marking for these flowers. And you can see I do have some of that peach on my brush, that's all right by me. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of dabbing wherever I feel the bottom of this particular cluster of flowers is gonna go. Um, so that way this ends up being like a shadow once I'm all done. And I don't like mine to be super systematic. Um, so I really, you'll find that I have big dots and little dots. I like to have what I refer to as chaos in my, in my paintings. I do a lot of um, paintings with, with nature in them and mother nature is not the most organized person in the world or entity in the world. So you have fun with this. I definitely want to have something covering this tail area where the tail meets the body. So that way it kind of looks like the, the um, bird is just kind of nestled in there. And then I've got a couple of little ones over here. And again, you can really have some fun with this. And once you've got what you feel to be enough of the shadowy area, now you just go and you're gonna pick up that mid-tone, whatever pretty, you know, pastel-y color you have come up with. And now I'm gonna start to kind of dab that into my sections. And I am preserving or, you know, helping to keep some of that brown, the darker tone alone. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cover it all with this with this peachy color I've created. I'm just using this peachy color to add that that mid-tone to it. So I don't want to cover up all of that brown, but I can overlap it in some areas. Um, you can even overlap your branches a little bit. You don't have to just have a flower at the end of every um, branch. You can certainly intermingle it and put these little like clusters of flowers or you know maybe you have a couple of little rogue ones that are just coming off the side. Um, and then I'm gonna come on over here. And because I'm working in wet paint, um, I've got some areas that are lighter than others and some that are darker than others. That's the beauty of doing it this way. It ends up being nice and natural and has all these really cool tones to it. Um, and you can really adjust it, you know, and kind of blend it um, with each other. And if you wanted more red or more yellow, you could certainly do that too. And now I'm just gonna pick up white. So if your brush, if you feel it's too overloaded with those colors, you can certainly 
either wipe it, wash it, you know, wipe it on your paper towel, whatever you want, but you're still working on wet paint, so it's, it's gonna be okay. And now I'm just picking up a whole bunch of white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strategically put some kind of thick clumps of white. I'm not really gonna blend them yet. I'm just kind of strategically putting some of these thicker white spots kind of at the top of where I want the top of that particular section of flower to go. And then once I have these kind of thick white dots, then I'm gonna go back and lightly blend it with, um, with further dotting it into the peachy or the other colors that are around it. So I'm still just kind of adding these thicker white dots. And you can see I'm not really um, being too systematic about it. I've got a good amount of paint on my brush, so some of these dots are really kind of thick and, you know, and have a lot of paint on them. And now once I've got that accomplished, now I'm not gonna reload my brush. I'm just gonna kind of sit here and really just kind of tap, 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 so it works its way into some of that other paint. And if you want, you can have a couple of little fun ones that just kind of make their way out of the pack and they've just kind of, you know, been highlighted by that sun. And again, just kind of tap, tap, tap it into the, the nearby flowers. It doesn't have to be into the whole, um, area of flowers. This is just meant to be these little highlights that have been, you know, dabbled with, with sun and they're the ones that are the brightest and they, they've got the most, the most light on them. And I'm not over blending. I'm just kind of lightly tap, tap, tapping so I can have these pretty highlights throughout it. And again, if you want a couple that just kind of say, oh, I'm over here, you know, just kind of all by themselves out there, you can certainly do that. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep continuing to tap these into my the rest of the, the flowers. And then we do have one tiny little step to go. It's the tiny little step that you do in every single painting that you do. Uh, it's gonna be with a small brush, but I'm just kind of finishing up here. I wanna make sure I've got all of these white, the big white dots, I wanna make sure I was able to get them worked in as much as I want them to be. And if you wanna add more, you're more than welcome to add more. You know, this is one of those processes that as, you, as you're as you going, you might, you know, want to adjust it or go back and add more of that, um, the colored part that you had or more shadows, um, but I'm, digging this. So I think I'm going to add just a teeny bit more white over here just to kind of give these a little bit more energy. And then I am going to switch brushes to my tiny brush and get ready for the final step. All right, so what we're doing now is we are doing the final step, and it's the final step to any painting, which is to sign it. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. You can sign yours wherever you want. I'm doing my initials. You could do the date. You could do a symbol. You could do your first name. Whatever works for you is fine by me. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your beautiful cardinal sitting in a spring blossoming tree. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>